So your doctor ordered blood work. You probably think, go to the lab, get it done, check it off the list. But what most people don't realize is what you do before the test matters a lot. If you make a mistake, like eating when you're supposed to fast or skipping a medication or not telling your doctor about something you're taking, your results could be inaccurate. That means you might have to spend another day going back to the lab to repeat the test. And even more importantly, a mistake could lead to the wrong diagnosis or the wrong treatment. Hello, I'm Dr. Barron, a board-certified endocrinologist, and in this video, I will explain the 10 most common mistakes people make before getting their blood work done and how to avoid them. Let's start with the most common mistake, not fasting properly. I once had a patient whose blood sugar came back unexpectedly high. I asked him, are you sure you are fasting? He said, yes, I did not eat anything for 12 hours. So I really tried to figure out if he truly had a high fasting sugar. So I asked him again, did you drink anything that morning? He said, sure, I always start my day with coffee. Well, that's the issue. When you're supposed to fast for a blood test, it means water only. No coffee, no tea, no juice, and certainly no cream, sugar, gum, or even mints. Even small amounts of flavor or calories can elevate glucose and insulin levels and may significantly affect triglyceride measurements. If your doctor tells you to fast, plan to avoid all food and drinks except plain water for at least eight hours before your test. Some doctors may recommend 12 hours of fasting, especially if you're having triglycerides or advanced lipid panel testing done. If you're unsure, always ask. The second mistake is fasting too long or skipping medications. Some people go to the other extreme. They fast way too long, like 16 hours, and skip all their medications just in case. That's a problem as well. Overfasting can cause low blood sugar, especially if you have diabetes and take insulin or medications like glipizide. That can lead to shakiness, dizziness, or even fainting during your blood draw. If you are on this type of medications, ask your doctor whether to take or hold your morning dose. It depends on your usual blood sugars and the tests being done. Even more concerning is when people skip essential medications like blood pressure or seizure medications. Stopping them abruptly, even for one day, can be dangerous. Skipping your blood pressure medication may cause your blood pressure to spike, which increases the risk of serious complications, including stroke or other cardiovascular events. The same goes for seizure medications. Skipping a dose can make you more likely to have a seizure. So always ask your doctor if you're unsure how to manage your medications before a blood test. Mistake number three is exercising right before the test. You might think getting some exercise before your blood test is a healthy choice, but intense exercise right before your labs can affect the results. When you exercise hard, like lifting weights or doing high-intensity training, your muscles break down a little, and that causes your body to release an enzyme called creatine kinase, or CK. If CK levels are high, it can look like there is muscle damage even if you are completely healthy. Exercise can also raise your creatinine, which might make it seem like your kidney function is worse than it actually is. Even glucose and liver enzymes can go up for a short time after a tough workout. If your doctor isn't expecting those changes, your labs might look abnormal, and that could lead to unnecessary repeat testing added stress, and possibly even a referral to a specialist that you don't really need. To keep things accurate, it's best to avoid intense workouts the day before, and especially the morning off your blood test. Mistake number four is not staying hydrated. Dehydration makes it harder to draw blood and can concentrate your blood components, affecting kidney function tests and electrolytes. Aim for a steady water intake the day before your test and drink a full glass of water in the morning, unless your test requires fasting from fluids also, which is rare. Mistake number five is getting blood work during temporary changes that skew results. So if you've been drinking alcohol more than usual, especially right before your blood test, it can affect your results. Let's say you just got back from a bachelorette party in Vegas 
or from a cruise where you took full advantage of the drink package, that's probably not the best time to get your liver enzymes or cholesterol checked. Drinking alcohol can temporarily raise liver enzymes, triglycerides, and blood sugar levels, even in otherwise healthy people. So if you go for labs right after heavy drinking, there is a good chance your results will look abnormal, and your doctor may simply advise you to repeat the test later to see if things normalized. The same goes for checking liver function while you are taking medications for an acute illness, like antibiotics for bronchitis. These medications can also cause temporary liver enzyme changes that may not reflect your baseline. But there are times when we do want to test liver enzymes while you are taking medication, like if you're taking a cholesterol-lowering medication like a statin or treatment for nail fungus. In those cases, we're checking intentionally to make sure the medication is not harming your liver over time. In summary, if your doctor ordered labs, don't schedule them right after a stretch of heavy alcohol use or during a temporary illness, unless the timing is part of what we're monitoring. Otherwise, the results may not reflect your usual health and could lead to unnecessary repeat testing. Mistake number six is taking supplements that interfere. Some over-the-counter supplements can interfere with the lab results, and biotin is one of the biggest culprits. Biotin is commonly found in hair, skin, and nail supplements. It doesn't hurt your thyroid, but it can interfere with the lab test that we use to check thyroid function. Here is what actually happens. When you go to the lab, your blood is drawn and placed in a tube. Then they use a special test to measure your TSH. You can think of it like the lab is dipping a little measuring tool into the blood sample to see how much TSH is there. But if there is too much biotin in your blood, it displaces the TSH from the measuring tool. So the test doesn't pick up all the TSH and it ends up looking lower than it really is. That's a problem because if your TSH comes back low, your doctor might think your thyroid is overactive. Or, if you're on a thyroid medication, they may think that your dose is too high. They might order more tests or even tell you to lower your medication when they shouldn't, and that can make you feel worse. A lot of people get confused by this and think biotin is bad for the thyroid, or that people with thyroid issues shouldn't take biotin. That's not true. Biotin doesn't harm your thyroid at all. It just interferes with how the test reads your thyroid levels. So if you're taking a supplement with biotin, stop it for at least two or three days before your blood test and let your doctor know. That way, your results are accurate and we can make the right decisions based on real numbers. Mistake number seven is testing hormones at the wrong time. Let's take testosterone as an example. Your testosterone peaks in the early morning and drops as the day goes on. So if you go to the lab in the afternoon, you might get a falsely low level and diagnose someone with low T when they're actually fine. That's why we check total testosterone in the early morning. Now, with cortisol, it depends on what we're looking for. If we suspect cortisol deficiency, like in Addison's disease, we should test early in the morning around 8 a.m. when the cortisol is supposed to be at its highest. So if the cortisol level is low in the morning when it's supposed to be high, then we may be dealing with a cortisol deficiency. But it's also important that if you're getting testosterone or cortisol checked in the morning, that you have had a good night's sleep the night before. If you stayed up all night for work, travel, or any other reason, and then go to the lab in the morning, your levels may be off because those results are being compared to people in the general population who are sleeping at night. So being awake all night can disrupt normal cortisol and testosterone levels in the morning. On the other hand, if you're looking for cortisol excess, like in Cushing syndrome, we need to test when cortisol is supposed to be low. One test we use is the midnight salivary cortisol, where you collect a saliva sample at home around midnight using a kit and send it back to the lab. Why? Because if cortisol level is high at midnight, when it's supposed to be low, we suspect excess cortisol production. Mistake number eight is not telling your doctor about all the medications you're taking. You'd be surprised how many people forget to mention medications they get from weight loss clinics, 
online providers, or other non-traditional sources. I had a patient whose primary care doctor was concerned about high red blood cell count and was planning to refer him to a hematologist, a blood specialist, to check for possible bone marrow disorder. But the patient didn't mention that he was on testosterone pellets from a men's clinic, and testosterone is the common cause of elevated red blood cells. It's a well-known side effect. That information could have changed how the labs were interpreted and possibly saved him an unnecessary referral. Now, of course, we still have to rule out other causes, but knowing about the testosterone would have been very helpful right from the start. Mistake number nine is getting labs too soon after a medication change. If your doctor recently adjusted a medication, like starting a new diabetes medication or changing your thyroid hormone dose, and you go for labs too soon, the results may not tell us much. Medications take time to work. Early testing might not reflect the full effect, and we may end up making unnecessary changes. Give it the time your doctor recommended before rechecking. Let the medication do its job and let your labs reflect the real picture. And finally, mistake number 10 is waiting too long or testing right before your appointment. On the flip side, if you wait until the last minute to get your blood work, your labs might not be ready by the time of your appointment. Some patients cancel because the labs didn't come in yet, but that can be a mistake. Even if some results are still pending, the ones that are back might already show something serious, like a sharp decline in kidney function or signs of a urinary tract infection that need treatment. So don't skip your appointment. Come in, review the results we do have, and then make sure to follow up once everything else comes in. Waiting too long can delay care that you might need now. Being prepared for blood work might save you from extra pokes and a whole lot of unnecessary stress. Getting it right the first time means fewer delays, better care, and avoiding unnecessary worry or wasted time. If you find this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and share it with someone who has labs coming up soon. Remember, this is for educational purposes only, not medical advice. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.